Hey, Chris Lipe here with how to get low screams, growls, those rumbly extreme sounds out of your voice. Perhaps a sequel to this video should be how to not look like a complete idiot while you're getting great low growls and screams out of your voice. (laughs) Actually, though, if you're not willing to go there and look like an idiot and be really, really vulnerable with your voice and, yes, your facial expressions, you'll never get this. You don't always have to be quite so extreme, but if you watch any of these guys that really do this well, even live, They are drastically messing with their countenance to get these low sounds. That's because a lot of the low sound that you get, that low tone, comes from the way you shape your mouth. But more on that in a little bit. In this video, I'm going to give you three angles to approach your voice with so that you can start to develop low tones, low screams, low growls in your voice. And I go in-depth on all three of these things in my course, The Aggressive Vocalist's Master Plan of Attack, linked below. So if you'd like more help developing this style, click that link, check out the course. Tip number one, we're going to center around the fry sound in our voice. Ah, fry, fry. And we're gonna develop a very loose sounding fry. Now, this is true vocal fry. I can talk down here and I sound like I'm kind of croaking. This is different than which is a compressed sound, a false chord engaged sound. Lots of people confuse vocal fry with that sound. They are different. But for right now, we're going to go into just vocal fry. And as we phonate in vocal fry, we're going to be adjusting the shape of our face, the shape of our mouth, the position of our larynx. We're going to simply observe how different things sound. See, fry uh, has no pitch in it, has no note at all, at least the way I'm doing it right now, complete floppy chord engagement. If I go, uh, and then I go, And then I further lower my larynx so that I'm yawning. Oh, versus ah, but I do it in fry. Ah, Try that and notice the difference in resonance. This is huge when we are developing low screams in our growls in our voice because a lot of it comes from this sort of posture change. And the exercise that I'm going to have you uh, ultimately do here is going to expose this with some other things. But you heard it in the beginning example, too. Uh, Smile. And don't worry that you look really stupid. Just experience those differences in resonance. Working this way first, before we start nailing our voice and and using a bit more energy, centers on the fact that this is a huge tone control, just the way we posture our face, our larynx position, all of those things. All right, next. Bummo. Bummo. We're going to use this silly phrase for this next section. But what we're going to do is we're going to ground in the healthy clearing of our throat. So not like this, which actually can make you cough and it's tickly and it doesn't feel right. We're actually going to ground that clearing of our throat in the polite way, which I've covered in other videos. Excuse me, sir. This is very, very high. The sensation is high when we're clearing our throat this way. And we're going to go bum and then we're going to go down and ground in that sensation. So it's going to sound like this. bum bum Now, we're not quite there with, with the overall growl sound, but we'll get there. What this is allowing us to do is open 
in a certain way, like we did in the first exercise. We're allowing our primary chords to be engaged, but we're practicing this engagement of while we're shaping our throat in a sort of a quiet way. This is not loud what I'm doing here. But you can start to hear a little bit of that guttural sound. If you feel like when we go down to O, as you're opening your throat and lowering your larynx, that you have a sensation that's lower in your throat and you start to tickle and cough, you are not doing it right. You must center your energy high as you do this. A good way to check you know, if, you, if you're starting to cause temporary damage and then permanent damage, uh, if you are doing this a long time, is to go check your head voice. If you can still squeak well and have good closure in your head voice while you're experimenting with this stuff, you know that you are not introducing swelling that's keeping your, your cords from closing correctly. So I strongly recommend when you're experimenting with these things, be uh, in and out of your head voice quite a bit. Oh, checking that. Ah, if it starts to sound like this, ah, ah, without you being able to control it, then you need to stop. You're doing it wrong and you will cause swelling and ultimately damage if you continue. So, bum, oh, bum, oh. So we're further, you notice I'm smiling when I'm singing, when I'm saying bum, bum, now you must make sure that you are not getting too low. I'll repeat that again. Not low is in, in terms of timbre, low in terms of sensation. And here's the third exercise we're going to incorporate. We have we have bum bum and now we're going to practice sighing in the midst of this now a good sigh if i go <sighs> notice in that sigh <sighs> there's a bit of head voice going on <sighs> And then I'm breaking. My voice is actually cracking. I'm using a lot of air and I'm cracking. You've heard me talk a lot about exploiting our vocal break. This is another way to do it. When we have talked on the channel before about it, we've talked about pushing higher until your voice breaks. And then you can get these higher pitched screams up there. Really aggressive and blood curdling. It's really cool. Here, though, we're not going to take the posture of pushing up till our voice breaks. We're going to take the posture of going down till our voice breaks. And again, a lot more on dialing this in in a usable way in my course, The Aggressive Vocalist Master Plan of Attack, linked below. But this is the beginnings of it. So just start sighing. <sighs> 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 and let your voice kind of do what it does. You're going to be blowing a lot of air, so you shouldn't be practicing this kind of thing very long because you could dry out your vocal cords. But if you're doing this softly and accepting what happens, paying attention if you're feeling lightheaded or not, that's fine. Just make sure you're not doing these things too long. And when you're first starting, a few minutes a day dialing in these kinds of sensations or experimenting with them. But let me show you the progression that happens and what this sigh unlocks when we combine it with these other exercises. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm learning to break my voice not by pushing higher until my voice breaks, not till I've reached my limit, my range limit in my chest voice. But what I've done is I've, I've started to expose how low I can go in my head voice until I naturally break into a lower chest note, which when you go like this, <sighs> notice how low in pitch or, or note, not, it's not really a note, but low in pitch, when I finally ground into my chest, it naturally goes. <sighs> <sighs> That's low and rich. It's not, <sighs> right? I don't have that high sound. I am sighing and I'm in my head voice as long as I possibly can be until I ground in that. <sighs> 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 
So what we're going to do, bummo, we're going to sigh. Bummo, bummo. Notice I'm not adding any compression. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Eh, eh, eh. That high sensation clearing my throat. I'm not doing that. But now I'm going to combine them. Bum -o. Bum -o. Ah, notice there, your voice is going to do all sorts of things. Right when I feel my voice sighing into that lower chest, breaking into it. Bum -o. Right there. I'm going to invoke uh, uh, the M sensation. Bum, bum, oh. ah. And I'm going to let my voice crack in and out. It's okay as you're dialing this in. Bum, oh. Bum, oh. Bum, oh. That's okay if your voice cracks. I can't say that enough. Now, as you're doing this, as you're grounding on the O oh, in the position of your larynx and bringing it down, make sure you're keeping the sensation high and that you're not getting into Ugh, Cookie Monsterville. No, we don't want that. <coughs> because that creates conflict with your primary chords and can cause the tickling and coughing that a lot of us experience. But as you get into this and you, and you add compression, more compression, which is this eh, 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 uh, polite clearing your throat, you're going to notice the sensation broaden, not necessarily lower, but broaden in your throat. Bum, 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 oh, bum, oh. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to think vocal fry. Fry, fry, as we get down to that lower sound. Again, check your head voice. Ah, ah, do I have good closure? Am I burning out my primary chords? Now we're about to cause loose chord engagement. Ah, so after we sigh and do the bum we're going to remove all pitch. So we're not going to be doing bum bum We kind of have that little note in there. Instead, we're going to think fry, loose chord engagement, as we broaden this experience of compression that we've sighed into. Bum, bum, oh, bum, oh, bum, oh. Ooh, that's really, really cool. Now, you're going to feel like when you start doing this that, wow, you run out of breath quickly. Yes, you do. Lows, growls, low screams take a lot of air, especially as we are practicing sighing into them. After a while, you won't have to sigh as much. This transition is going to get faster and faster for you. Also, like you heard at the beginning with my example, practice the recording these things and layering them and listening back to how the layers inform the overall sound. What you heard at the beginning, and I invite you to go back and listen to that sample again, was three of me doing the scream. What we hear on most recordings that we really like, most studio recordings when they growl, is, these, is this layered. So it both smooths out and makes it more terrifying and rich and layered at the same time. This is important that we do this, as we're, even as we're developing the technique, because what we are used to hearing on our recordings is more than you can make with one voice. If we assume that one voice does all of this, that doubles and triples isn't part of what we're hearing, we tend to overdo it while we're training this kind of sound and sensation into our voice. So, fry, fry. Number one. Number two. Bum, oh, bum, oh, bum, oh. Compress, 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 and then add the sigh. <sighs> bum, oh, bum, oh. Then add the compression in. Bum, oh, bum, oh into the sigh, then work the sensation of fry back in. Bum, oh, bum, oh. Ooh, that was brutal. Loved it. Felt great. And I can still go, ah! I still have all my vocal stamina. Doesn't hurt at all. Doesn't tickle. There's a little bit of heat and engagement, but that's totally okay. 
Hope you found this helpful. Again, for more of this, more development in how to get rangy, long-lasting, energetic screams and aggressive mixed voice, click the link below and check out my course, The Aggressive Vocalist's Master Plan of Attack. We'll see you for more.